Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is a practical math channel. We do math with a purpose. Uh, I was a building contractor before I started teaching, um, built some homes, building a house right now, and I currently teach both math, woodshop, and pre-engineering. I make a lot of videos to help my students and folks I know pass a math union exam or take the next trade exam to go to the next level. And a lot of comments and a lot of people ask me, well, what happens if I really don't have any math background at all? Well, that's what this course is all about. This is a foundations in math course. I'm gonna go right from the beginning all the way through so you could do well on like a standardized union exam, standardized math test. The thing about math, which a lot of people don't actually know, is that math is not hard. It just seems really hard because it is so cumulative meaning it is so based on the previous section. So if you miss a section, then the next pieces don't really make sense. And that's why it starts to stack up against you. You might wanna go back and watch these videos and make sure all of your foundational skills are solid and then moving on will be a lot easier. You'll realize as you progress through this series that being able to multiply and know your multiplication tables perfectly is essential for all the other skills. If you don't actually have that, it's really hard to do fractions because you're looking for common denominators and you gotta be able to run that multiplication table in your mind. So I put a link to this in the description, print this out, Try and keep all of these together. Maybe make a notebook out of them and take your own notes. Try and do the problems before I do them and then watch how I do them and make sure we're on the same page moving forward together. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. This video is video number two. Uh, it's all about fractions. I'm gonna talk about fractions, equivalents, what those are. I'm gonna go over adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions. Fractions are found everywhere. It is really hard to do any ratio or proportion problem. It is hard to measure unless you have your fractions down. I have a fraction like 5 eighths. What that really means is there are eight equal parts. The denominator tells you how many equal parts there are, and the five lets you know how many of those parts you have. So if the pizza is split into eight slices, you have five of those eight slices. The five, the number on top is called the numerator, the eight, the number on the bottom is called the denominator. There are three types of fractions. There are proper fractions. When the number above the numerator is less than the number on the bottom, so five eighths is a proper fraction. There are improper fractions. When the number in the top is greater than or equal to the bottom number, like 13 eighths, that is an improper fraction. And the third type of fraction is called a mixed number. It is a whole number and a fraction say three and a half or two and five sixteenths. Equivalent fractions have the same value. So three fourths and six eighths have the exact same value. All I did is multiply by a factor of one, two over two to get that six eighths. So it hasn't changed that value at all. That's really a very big idea in fractions and math in general. And usually you always reduce uh, your fractions to the lowest term. So you don't write it as six eighths, you reduce it to three fourths. All right, let's start by reducing some of these fractions. Again, go ahead and print out this document. Try and reduce all these fractions yourself first while you pause the video and then watch how I do them. So first thing I do when I reduce fractions, I just check to see if they're both even. If they're both even, I know two will go into each one of them. So 10 will be divided by two to give me five. And then 12 will be divided by two to give me six. And then I check that to see if there are any other numbers that'll go into each of them and five and six are the lowest, so that reduced fraction is five, six. Again, you can see why your multiplication tables are essential. Over this one, I'm looking for numbers that go into both of those. Well, I know that 12 is six times two, meaning that six will go into here one time, six will go into 12 two times, so that reduces to one half. Right here, I'm looking for numbers that go into both of these. I know that 10 is divisible by five, as is 15. Five goes into 10 two times, Five goes into 15 three times, so I'm left with two thirds. Here, I'm looking for numbers that go into both of them. They are even, so I could cut it to two six, and then cut that in half again to one third. Or I could see that four goes into four one time, four goes into 12 three times, the same one third, two ways to get there. 18 over 24, back to the multiplication table. I gotta think about six times what gives me 18, six times what gives me 24. I can see that six times three gives me 18, six times four 
gives me 24, and that reduces to 3 quarters. All right, again, pause the video, do these problems, and watch how I do them. We're looking for equivalence. So I could just multiply this by anything as long as it has a value of 1. So I can multiply it by 3 over 3. Right? 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1. So I'm not affecting the value, and it's going to give me an equivalent fraction. So I multiply across the top. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 ninths and 2 thirds are equivalents. Just like I did up here, if I want to go backwards, I can see 3 goes into 6 2 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. I can multiply this by, again, any value of 1 I want. I can multiply it by 2 over 2 to give me 10 twelfths. That's an equivalent of that. I can multiply this as well by 2 over 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 16 times 2, 32. As long as the value I'm multiplying by is 1, I'm not changing the value. It's going to give me an equivalent fraction. And lastly, oh no, not lastly, you got a couple more. 7 eighths, I'll multiply that by whatever I want. 10 over 10, same value, that's going to give me 70 over 80. That's the equivalent of 7 eighths. And lastly, right here, I can multiply by whatever I want. 5 over 5, as long as that numerator and denominator are the same, this whole thing equals 1. 5 times 1, 5 times 12 is 60. All equivalent fractions. So the next section is convert the improper fraction to a mixed number. Remember, a mixed number is a whole number with a fraction. So what I'm going to do here is kind of similar. I'm, it's really a division problem. It's really saying 12 divided by 3. But I know that I could do it this way. 3 goes into 12 four times with nothing left over. So it's actually just a whole number. 6 goes into 14 twice. And then once it goes in there twice, that's 12 with the 2 left over. So that's going to give me 2 and 2, 6. The remainder goes into the numerator. And then I have to reduce that. 2 goes into here once. 2 goes into here three times to give me 2 and a third. There's my mixed number with the reduced fraction. 20 fifteenths. So 15 goes into 21 time with 5 left over, 5 fifteenths. And then again, I reduce that fraction. 5 goes into here one time, into here three times. Goes into 12 one time with 2 left over. And again, reduce that fraction. Both are even. They'll both be divisible um, by 2 to give me 1 fifth. And then 12 goes into 25 two times. That's going to give me 24 with 1 left over. So 24 and 1, so it's going to be 2 and 1 twelfth. All right, the next thing we're going to do is add and subtract fractions. This really goes back to the first chapter we did in whole numbers looking on the number line. The adding and subtracting is the same. This is the most important part of adding and subtracting fractions. The bottom number has to be the same or you cannot add them, right? So if I have a pizza split into eight slices and another pizza split into six slices, I can't really take that slice and have it fit into the other piece. It just doesn't work. So that's the same thing here. So that bottom number has to be the same. Once that bottom number is the same, then I add across the top, keep the bottom number. So right here on number 16, I add across the top to get 3, keep the bottom number. Number 17, I add across the top, 8, keep the bottom number, reduce that fraction. 8 goes into each one of those. One time to leave me with the one. I do not have the same bottom number on this one. So I'm going to have to go back to the skill I used before and get a same bottom number. That bottom number, the denominator is going to be 8. To turn this into an 8, I'm going to multiply by a 1. 4 over 4 is going to give me an 8 on the bottom. But I'm not changing the value because that's equal to a 1. So that's going to give me 4 eighths plus that 3 eighths. Add across the top, 7. Keep that bottom number the same, 7 eighths. Then on number 19, neither of these are going to go into each other. So I'm going to have to make, multiply them both by factors of 1. I'm going to multiply this half by a 3 over a 3. That's going to give me 3 6. I'm going to multiply this by a 2 over 2. That's going to give me 4 6. And I did all that to get that bottom number the same. I'm going to add across the top to get 7 over 6. 
It's an improper fraction, the numerator greater than the denominator. Six goes into seven one time with one left over, and that's my answer, one and one six. All right, I just moved the screen up. Here are four more addition subtraction problems. Go ahead and pause the video and do those um, on your own, and then come back and then check your work against mine. I'll pause my video and do those really quick. Okay, right here, my common denominator is 40, so I multiply this by eight over eight, this by five over five, add it across the top to get 49 fortieths, uh, improper fraction converted to a mixed number. Here I have a common denominator, one minus five is negative four, over that common denominator eight, reduced to negative one half. Here a common denominator is 16, 11 minus six is five over sixteenths. Right here, multiply this by four over four, and I got nine minus four, five over 16. All right, next, let's move on to multiplying fractions. So to multiply the fraction, surprisingly, multiplication and division is a lot easier than addition and subtraction. The rule on multiplying fractions is just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Reduce, turn it into a mixed number if it's an improper fraction. So multiply across the top, one times two is two, five times three, 15, it won't reduce. Uh, multiplying positive by negative will give me a negative. So three times negative one is negative three, five times four is 20, won't reduce. Another, sometimes you see an X, sometimes you see an asterisk. Um, they mean the same thing, multiplication. Multiply across the top, three, multiply across the bottom, 16 can't be reduced. Negative times a positive, that's going to give me a negative. Negative 1 times 2, negative 2. 2 times 3, 6. That can reduce. 2 will go into there to give me negative 1 third. The other way I could see it, I could reduce afterwards like that, and that's great. The other way I could do it is I know that 2 goes into here one time and into here one time, so I could reduce before I multiply. And that also gives me the negative one third. Divide the following fractions. Division is actually really easy, as well as just like multiplying. The rule on division is you take the second fraction and you flip it over, and then you multiply. So on this one right here, I have one fifth. I'm going to flip that thing over. It's still a fraction. The two goes to the top, the one to the bottom. I flip it over and I multiply. Multiply across the top, two. Multiply across the bottom. Five, two fifths. Okay, number 29 right here, one eighth. Multiplied by this thing flipped over, eight over five. I could see a common term there. I could actually cancel those. Multiply across the top, across the bottom to get one fifth. You'll see a division sign or a slash sign, or you could even see it as one eighth divided by five eighths. Those all mean the same thing. So I have 11 sixteenths. Divided by, so I'm going to change that to multiplication, 3 eighths. So I flip it over, to make it 8 thirds. I could go right across the top, right across the bottom, or I could reduce right now. 8 goes into here one time, into here two times. 11 times 1 is 11. 2 times 3 is 6. I'm all done. Um, there's an improper fraction. 6 goes into 11 one time with 5 left over, and it leaves me with 1 and 5, 6. So that's multiplication and division of fractions. Do these problems on your own. See how you do on them. Uh, and then watch how I do them, and hopefully it'll help you out. There's a lot of fractions, but they are such a foundational skill um, that if you don't have these, it's hard to move on from here. So really put the time in here. And I'll say it again. If you really don't have your multiplication tables down, like if you're not really quick to see that 8 goes into 16 two times, you got to go back to video 1, print out that multiplication table, and just practice it in the car while you're driving. Two times two is four, two times six is 12, and just work your way all the way through. So that's an overview of fractions. It's chapter two in the video. I'll put a link to chapter one as well. I uh, hope these videos are helping. If you like this channel, think about subscribing, trying to stay up on your math skills. Uh, I started the video with this, I'll end with it as well. Math is actually not that hard. It's just so based on the previous section that if you got a few holes in there, it's impossible. So the point of these videos is to fill in those holes so that you could do the best you can going forward in mathematics.